Hi, this is Jim Ave again, and I'm going to cover the um, professional portfolio assignments for Kinesiology 792C, which you need to have um, either in front of you on your computer or whatever, so you can see it is the syllabus. I'm uh, I'm at specifically Appendix B in the syllabus, and then you need to have the professional portfolio template that I have in a course and the rubric, the assessment rubric for this assignment. So I'm going to go over those three things. I'm going to spend more time in the actual template um, and explain the different sections of this assignment um, while looking at the template. Okay, so the, the purpose of this professional portfolio is um, really to allow you to show how you meet the BOC standards of professional practice at your workplace. Once a month, you'll basically be turning in, in a, uh, one of these professional portfolios. Uh, typically, you'll have one code, professional code, and one professional practice standard per month that you'll have to turn in. I'm going to go ahead and go to the template. And here in the template, I have a typical title page. It's uh, APA formatted, so use this template for your uh, temp uh, for your um, portfolio you can use this for any other assignment too. just change the course name and all that junk and then in here you put the number so your first one will be number one two and three so yeah, pretty straightforward uh, the very first thing you're going to write is your introduction and you'll see that here I have the assignment title or your paper title it really should be your paper title, whatever your paper is titled. At the top of this, you don't have a section title called Introduction. Um, the APA does not uh, require you to do that, so you just go right into your introduction. As you can see in the syllabus, I, I just really want you to introduce yourself to whoever's reading this professional portfolio. What's your name, your, back, your educational, professional background, contact information, anything that you want others to know about you. You can include a picture, you can talk about your family if you wish, uh, your hobbies, whatever you want to include here to give the reader some idea of who you are um, so we get an understanding of who you are. Now this section will not be graded. This is uh, just an introduction, I'm not really grading this, it's just really to get you to introduce other others to, to you and to this professional portfolio. So this, this section can be as long as it, you want it to be. And then if it, if you end it in the middle of a page, I want you to skip all the way down to the very uh, beginning of, of the next page and start your athletic training codes slash professional, or excuse me, practice standards executive summary section. And I have the, the section titles as a level one uh, section title per APA. So that's what it should look like. And here what you're going to do is you're going to provide just a summary. It's called an executive summary of each of the uh, standards or code that's been assigned for that particular um, professional portfolio. So each one typically has two. Uh, you should explain the standard order code in, in, in a way that a non-athletic trainer would have a good understanding. Now what I don't want you to do, I just don't want you to copy and paste it straight out of the document. Use different words to explain what this stuff is about. Make sure you cite your references and you can read some of those other stuff I'm picky about, the indent paragraphs and all that stuff. So I would say that each description, description for the code should be about a paragraph and a description for the practice standard should be about a paragraph. Really don't need more than that. Um, so that should be good. You, when you finish that section, you're going to start on a brand new page for the Athletic Training Codes and Practice Standard Artifact. And what you're going to do here is you're, the first thing you need to do is find uh, an artifact. Artifact is, is just actual evidence that you are meeting the Athletic Training Code or the, and the Athletic Training Practice Standard. So the easiest way to think about this is that you should find one artifact for the code and then one artifact for the practice standard. I think, uh, I can't remember if it's the standard or the code off the top of my head, 
but one of them is direction. And what that code or standard is talking about is that you have direction by a physician. And so you can use that if you have a letter from your team doctor or team doctors. It can be a clinic or something to that effect. Um, you, you'll use that as an artifact. And I can't remember the second what the next, uh, the other code or practice standard is for the very first portfolio. So then you'll find another artifact that demonstrates that you meet that other particular standard or code. Now, you'll place the actual artifact in your appendices. You're not going to place it in here where, where we're at right now. What you're going to write up here in this in the body of your paper is how that artifact actually demonstrates that you meet the code or the practice. I would suggest that you first describe the very first code or standard, doesn't matter what order, if you do code or standard, whatever, but stay, be um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, uh, consistent throughout the rest of your paper. If you start with the code in the uh, executive summary, continue with the code here. If you start with a practice standard when you describe what it means, start with the practice standard here. Your description, again, should be two to three pages, so maybe a page, page and a quarter per code, another page, page and a quarter for the practice standard, describing why that particular code or practice standard actually satisfies, or excuse me, why that artifact satisfies that particular standard or code. Be very clear, be specific, um, and I show here in the, um, right here, is this is how you should refer the reader to the appendix. So uh, you, you'll say the artifact that I selected was a letter from XYZ um, team physician, parentheses, appendix A. And then you go on and explain why that particular artifact meets the standard or the code. Again, this section should be two to three pages in length. And then uh, on a brand new page, you're going to go to your last section, which is called the reflection section. And then in this section, what I would like you to do is, I want you to reflect, obviously. I want you to think back to when you were an athletic training student and until now in, in that code and in that practice standard, how have you uh, gotten better in that particular area? Be specific as possible. Think about, you know, some of you, it's been a while since you were a student and some of you were just a student just a little while ago. So this can be a bit challenging for you. But just think about how you've gotten better in that particular area. area. How can you, the other thing is how can you continue to grow, develop and, and improve uh, in this particular area? Now, I really want you to focus on the things that you do well in this area, not so much your weaknesses. I, I, what things are you currently just nailing it and you're just excellent at and how can you continue to develop and grow get better at that particular area other thing you can talk about is any professional development you have done in this area or some maybe reading research and all those type of things uh, in this particular area you can also again up there on how you can continue to grow you can think about workshops and those type of things too so this section should be two to three pages it's really for you to think back and reflect on previous experiences in these areas and then reflect on and project on how you how you can get better in the particular area over time again two to three pages in this then after that on a brand new page you have your reference page and again this is the correct reference style for this and you should be citing references you should be citing the boc practice standards um, in this paper Remember, I believe in the um, Kinesiology 770 course, I talked about evidence-based academics, where you should be supporting your thoughts with uh, research. And so I really require that you do have research uh, references throughout your paper. If you're talking about personal experience, you don't have references for that, but if you're talking about 
uh, an ankle tape job, you should be citing somebody for that information. When we're talking about a specific stress test, you should be citing references for that. It could be textbooks. Uh, those are per perfectly fine references, but you still should be citing references. And here I have a reference example. Um, this would be a, a book. So make sure you do cite your references correctly in the paper and um, at the reference page. Then you have your uh, appendix. And you see how, I, whoops, how I've titled it. should be italicized. And you're going to start your very first appendix as A. Then your next appendix would be probably your second artifact would be appendix B. Then your artifact after that would be appendix C, so forth and so on. Uh, the appendices are not included. or you, know, you don't have to follow APA in the appendices, but you should uh, still title it appendix A like that. Now, if you don't attach, you include your artifact in the appendix, you automatically lose 35 points for this assignment. So make sure you provide that. And... Let's go to the rubric so I can show you how you're going to be assessed on this assignment. Um, you've had me in classes. Oops, I got the wrong. I got the wrong assignment here. Sorry about that. It's the same rubric. I just got the wrong one. That should be athletic training. We use the same uh, rubric for the two classes. Sorry about that. Anyways. Um, I'll give you feedback in the paper and within your rubric. I believe you all have had me in a class before where I will highlight the, uh, the area, then give you a point value, and then go through it and you get your total point value down at the bottom here. Now with this assignment, what is required is that you earn in all areas, the standard description or the um, executive summary, the artifacts section, the reflection section, the scholarly writing section, uh, the organization section, the APA style and format, and the for formatting section. You have to, all scores need to be in this good to meets criterion section for all those areas in order to pass the professional portfolio. Let's say that you just do an excellent job here on the description, but your artifact isn't all that great and your description is not very clear to me. And so you get a score in this area. You do have the opportunity to rewrite uh, portfolios that you don't quote pass. It's typically will be due the next uh, time the uh, portfolio is due. So if you don't do that good of a job on a very first portfolio. You can turn, we can redo it, turn it back in to me anytime between the time I give you feedback uh, back and to the next time it's due. I would say get it done early just so you can, I can give you feedback so you know if you're on the right track on the assignment. Um, let's go to the syllabus and I'll hit some of these last words here. Uh, you can see the point values on here. Uh, some things right in the first person, typically. Uh, you're either going to write in the first person, I, we, me, etc., or a third person. But if you're going to be in first person, stay in first person. Uh, don't switch back and forth between a grammar. And never use you or your in papers. That's just poor writing. Uh, don't do that. You typically should write in the past tense since you've already done all this stuff. It's already been done since you're talking about stuff that has taken place in the past. As always, uh, late assignments will result in a grade reduction. And I already talked about the professional portfolio rubric. Um, if you have any questions about this particular assignment, please feel free to post your questions in the Q&A form. That's what that form is for, is to help you with your assignments. Because uh, typically if a, one student has questions, other students have questions. And you guys have done a good job with this in my other course. So 
you know that I try to get get back to you as quick as possible. Uh, students in the past have really enjoyed doing this assignment just because they learn something about themselves and how they have grown as an athletic trainer. So look forward to reading your portfolios and and uh, let me know if you have any questions. I'm here to help.